I'm Keep Jewel, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we are taking a closer look at Teen Titans issue number seven. Will Damien and his new team be able to overcome King Shark? Maybe with the help of a mysterious outsider, they can. All this and more, let's hop on in. So, as the comic opens up, we once again check on in with Jackson Hyde. He's made the long trek from his small minded small town in Middle America to the Titans Tower. And, you know, he pretty much ran away from home home to be here, so if they don't take him in, he pretty much is going to have to start living on the street, which isn't good. Further, unfortunately, for the boy who would be Aqualad, the team isn't currently there right now. They're in the water, duking it out with King Shark, and things are not going good. In the last arc, Damien Wayne may have learned the importance of friendship and teamwork, but that doesn't mean he's still a total control freak, and that the rest of the team isn't exactly up to date on his maneuvers, tactics, and everything else that he wants them to do. It's for all these reasons and more King Shark actually ends up getting away, which makes Damien rather furious, and when Jackson Hyde ends up strolling into the tower asking for a job, he runs right into a ticked-off Damien. All Jackson wants is an audition, but Damien takes out all of his anger on him, saying this isn't the sort of place you audition, we're a super team, I don't even know who the hell you are, man, in fact, you shouldn't even have gotten past security. Now, everyone else on the team, like Starfire and Flash, feel that Damien's giving this new guy a hard time, but they don't exactly rush in to defend him either. This awkward moment will have to be put on the back burner, though, because it's at that moment King Shark manages to take over the airwaves. Because remember, everyone, in comic book reality, it's just that easy to broadcast your manifesto all over the world. What does King Shark actually want? Well, as we discover, all those inmates he busted out of prison are now his own personal shark army, having undergone a bunch of gene splicing. Huh. You know, I get the feeling King Shark isn't smart enough to do all of that. But more on that in a minute. Damien mobilizes the team, and they get ready to retake Alcatraz. Traz Island and save all the people King Shark and his shark henchmen are holding hostage. There's some pretty good collaboration between the team members here. Wally and Raven work side by side and manage to take out most of the henchmen on their own. Things get quite interesting, however, when King Shark tries to slip away. Damien goes after him without any backup and ends up getting dragged down into the water, which of course is King Shark's element, but before Damien can be turned into a snack, however, he gets saved by the late intervention of Aqualad, who quite White conveniently chose this very moment to activate his Atlantean superpowers, man. And to think he went through all that trouble to save the life of someone who was mean to him. As you can only imagine, Damien is touched by all of this, he doesn't let it be shown that he is, and he even gives Aqualad a new Hydro suit that he was screwing around with. He's not on the team, not officially anyway, but Damien says maybe if he has nowhere to go, he can hang around, and well, we'll see where it goes from there. Now, after all that, King Shark ultimately did manage to get away and return to his paymasters, who we find out are none other than Nemo, the villains who have been making Aquaman's life hell in the last couple Aquaman arcs. Moreover than that, Shark regales Nemo with the tales of being defeated by a strange new Atlantean, and when the current boss of Nemo, Black Manta, hears about this, he wants to meet this young boy right away. Why, geez, Manta, it's almost like Jackson Hyde is your son or something. Teen Titans number 7 was another solid issue and a good example of why this might be one of my favorite teen books currently on comic shelves right now. Growth and characterization is really the key. Benjamin Percy doesn't rush anything. Damien's coming out of his shell and becoming more sociable, learning to deal with people better, but he's doing so at his own pace. Wally and Raven were seeing the sparks of a small romance starting to form between them. And we now have a new member of the team in Jackson Hyde Aqualad, who it seems like he's going to have a long and interesting journey to re-establish himself. Love the use of continuity too, bringing in Nemo and Black Man as villains for these guys to fight is just a really cool idea. Obviously, that's going to have to wait until after the Lazarus contract is said and done with, but sign me up for that when we get there. Overall, very pleased with this one. I would give it a 7.5 out of 10. So, there you have it, everyone. Another Teen Titans book on the books. I hope you enjoyed it, and while I have your attention, why not check out some of the other videos I have available from the channel? Also, while I have your attention, Free Comic Book Day is coming up the first Saturday in May, and I'm going to be at Worlds Collide Comics in Oshawa. Ontario, Canada. If you're around, come by and say hi. Until then, that'll just about do it for me. I've been Cape Jewel. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in another video. Bye bye